congratulations on 20 incredible consecutive years of going to Heart and Hand House for the work trip in Philippi, West Virginia. It's hard for me to believe that it's been that many years in a row, especially considering how it all started way back then. Please forgive my appearance. I'm at hunting camp, just finishing a trip of bear hunting and getting ready for deer season in a few days. And my son and daughter, Lydia and James, are seniors this year. So this will probably be the last time my son and I get to hunt deer and for a, for a while. So that's why I can't be with all of you tonight. Let me go back for a moment and recollect how this all started. As I recall, when I got to Asbury United Methodist Church, the youth group had been wanting to do a work trip for a long time. There was a lot of discussion about it, but people just didn't quite know how to start, what to do. There was no experience for a while, so I came on the scene and decided, hey, let's just do it. So one night, on a Sunday night, I announced to our youth group that we were going to be doing a work trip, but that we needed some help. Primarily, we needed some adult supervision, and we needed some tool men, some men who were handy with tools, knew how to construct buildings, uh, do repairs, maybe fix some chimneys. And so I announced this to the youth group, and that night, I remember two of the boys, Matt and Andy, went home and parent-napped their dad. What I mean by that is that they went home and told their dad what the youth pastor had said, and they needed him to go along on this trip because he had a lot of experience working with his dad, and after all, he was an engineer and knew about tools, so he had to go along. Otherwise, you weren't going to be able to do this trip. Well, as they say, the rest is history, and the tool men began. That first trip was quite an experience, to say the least. Go this time. Uh, I heard so many good things about it. Um, I'm just excited just to get to the work site and start working. Okay. I enjoyed it last year. Okay. Alex, why are you going for the first time? Because we told him now. Yeah. Yeah, they pretty much said it was fun. Nice. Uh, look cool. Yeah. It's fun and <laughs> and because he has long hair. I'd spread the goodwill and be able to graduate at the same time. Because <laughs> I like Jesus and both of my parents are going. <laughs> That's it? Really? I say I like there, There's a couple that come to mind right away. One, we had this, uh, this house that we were doing and uh, it became the Smurf house because we painted it Smurf blue. Uh, your daughter was in, involved with that. And we had a little girl there who kept getting stung by the bees and everything that were up in the eve of the house. Well, I have sort of a unique situation with myself. I won't get stung. I I've actually would, could physically walk, go up the ladder, uh, take my hands, and dig the uh, nest out and everything up there, and I didn't get stung. They swore to me that they never lit and they never stung. So, uh, and then at the end, we, we usually take over a gift, a Bible, and stuff like that. This little girl, and this is what was touching to me, she ran out and she had this little bee in the form of a rattle, and she wanted to give that to the bee man. I still have it, and that was years ago. Uh, the second thing that stands out was a young man who had a heart condition, and when we got down there, we were supposed to build a porch and, and stairs so that he could come out of his bedroom and go up, uh, go outside, maybe up into the woods or where, wherever he wanted to go. And when we got down there, he was, uh, he stayed by himself. He didn't, he ate in his room. He didn't really have any much uh, contact with the family and everything. He was in depressed. Uh, the kids, by the time we left, had him out on the porch and walking up with to them with, with the to the woods. Uh, while we were there, he had to have the thing changed on, on his chest, and uh, he, a nurse came out to do it, and he wanted one, one of our youth and me to stand there and, and do with him because it was a very painful ordeal for him to go through. So that's another thing that 
that really has stood out for me? I think my favorite memory from West Virginia was getting to know the kids better. Um, as the Kitchen Queen, we had one or two um, kids that would stay with us and help us during the day. And we really got to know them better one-on-one, -on -one, and I really loved that part. So my first assignment and my first work trip was putting kilting around the yes. base of the <laughs> trailer, yeah. trailer, yeah, otherwise called metal sheeting. Well, it was called skirting. But skirting, that's guys right. Guys wouldn't call it skirting, so we called it We kilting. called it kilting, right? Yeah. 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 What else? I was the electrician, Ron was the plumber. And Ron was the wannabe electrician who was relegated to plumber because there was a first-rate electrician on it. <laughs> One of the things I remember is that it was a great opportunity to work with the young men in the group and teach them that washing dishes in cold water was not the right way to do it, that warm water and soap was really kind of important. <laughs> you remember that? And I, that was Bush, I, I think. Yeah. Do you remember the uh, Orange Julius's? Oh, Colin yes. and Maddie Woolbox, yes. thank you for the yes. Orange Julius. Yes, really that, was, enjoyed that was wonderful. That, that was wonderful. Um, do you remember peeling apples during the rainstorms and the floods and all that kind of I, stuff? I remember lots of lots of rain and floods and, and, and mud and delivering lunch yeah. to people that, that looked yeah. like drowned rats. That, that I do remember. Yes. And how about our cleaning crews? They were pretty good. They were good. Yes, yeah. they were. We taught kids to clean. Remember scrubbing bubbles? Scrubbing bubbles, yes. Very important. Do you remember when the oven blew up? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you hear, did you hear about Jean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you hear? Did you hear? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. We do have a lot of memories of the work trips and um, uh, a lot of really good times and uh, good service. Um, so we thank everybody for everything they've done and I'm sure that there's lots of people that have fond memories and that's what this is all about. Yeah. Okay, um, my favorite part of West Virginia is like getting close to everyone here. I know that it's like a really big group. I think there are like over 60 people. But like even like the um, tool men and stuff, they're really cool. So I want to get close to everyone right before I leave for college. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can answer too. The memory work and roofing. Okay. The people in West Virginia are probably the number one thing that kept me going back to West Virginia. I loved the work. I loved being able to help serve other people. Um, the people that were there that we served um, every year I found to be interesting. Um, I learned a lot about um, a another culture, I guess, a little bit in West Virginia um, with the different people that we served. Um, and uh, a lot of times, especially if they had kids, it was always fun to, to learn a little bit about them and, and to play with the kids. Um, the people that went down with us um, from Asbury have been lifelong friends for the most part, um, both the adults and the kids. Um, and that's been a really, that's been really cool um, for my life to be able to stay in contact with so many people and to have that common bond um, with lots of, lots of people to understand um, what Philippi is like um, and what that whole experience is. Um, I would say that the cool thing about that week was that the relationships didn't end at the end of the week or they weren't postponed until the following summer. Um, like 99% of the people I would see on a weekly basis at church and that was really powerful to me to know that the people that were um, leading us on the job site and the people that were participating um, in, in the work were also spending time in church and getting involved in different things at Asbury. Um, that made a huge impact on, on my life and my spiritual journey, just knowing that the things that, um, that I was trying to make a priority in my life were the things that people I looked up to were already making a priority in their lives. Uh, the Asbury crew has been coming for so many years. I have a lot of good memories. Um, you know, you've had a lot of different folks uh, in the program through the years that it's been fun to connect with. Um, I think one of the things that I, I kind of identify with your crew, though, is the positive way that you guys connect with, with each of the families that you're working with. Um, you know, I, I can think of a few instances. Um, there was one year where you guys were building a wheelchair ramp, uh, following another crew up with, with some more work on that project. Uh, a young boy in the family that had cancer, and um, your group really connected 
real well with that family, particularly Jim, because of um, his similar family experience. And those kind of connections, you know, I think are almost as important as the work that gets done, um, the love that gets shared back and forth on those, on those kind of projects. Um, I, I'm hoping to uh, experience new challenges that will help me develop new skills um, around the work site and to try to better my understanding of building and as well as teaching me to have faith in God and trust that he will see everything through. Okay. Signing. I don't like that anymore. I love signing. Uh, yes. With a poncho? Oh with a poncho uh, on top of metal scaffolding in the middle of a thunderstorm. I'm really excited for the car ride down because that is fun. I'm also excited to <laughs> I want to read it. Um, meet um, the families and build a house and stuff. And um, siding. I really do like siding. So, but yeah. Okay. And to get dirty. Okay. Yes. My favorite part um, was becoming best pants shop. last night. <laughs> becoming best friends with Juanita last year. I love her. So I really want to bond with the, the, the people that we're building for. Okay. What's everything else? I like West Virginia because of all the people that I'm with and all the different things I get to do that I would never get to do here at home. It's pretty awesome. And I'm excited for my last year, even though it's kind of bittersweet. I'm just looking forward to all the just cool activities we're going to do other than um, building and stuff, but building is also going to be fun, you know. Might be a little exhausting, but you know, it'll still be a good experience and it'll be fun. How fortunate we are. And I think one of the um, difficult things, but what made me realize how very blessed and fortunate we are. One of the years Dustin and I both went down together and we had to leave early because we had to go to a wedding. And so we had spent three or four days in West Virginia working with people who have absolutely nothing and trying to help improve their lives a little bit. And then had to turn around and come home and go to a wedding that was in Newport, Rhode Island, which was just the stark opposite. And we didn't feel quite right doing that. It didn't seem quite fair, if that's the right word, that um, we could go to a wedding where everything was, all the stops were pulled for a, a beautiful fair, and yet there's people in West Virginia who could never even dream of having anything close to that. I think probably um, in just watching the watching the um, the kids grow in their faith and watching God's hands at work um, in each of the kids and and in the families um, and how things. I think God just helped everything work out so well on each of the trips. Little things that you would think would never come to fruition would come, and I would say probably that. Um, the trip has been very powerful um, in my life as far as what I've chosen to do with my life career-wise. Um, I learned a lot in West Virginia about what it means to be a leader um, and what it means to be an effective leader. Um, I have learned that the toll men have an incredible amount of patience um, for everyone on the trip that um, uses their tools and messes up their vehicles or slows down their projects. Um, and I've learned that having that patience um, is really critical um, for those of us that attended as, as youth to learn the skills. Um, and to also learn what it means to be a part of a team. Um, and so um, I've taken that very closely to heart when I am cleaning up a vehicle and trying not to complain or trying not to, to show my frustration, knowing that the fact that the leaders that I had did not show their frustrations towards me when I'm sure it was probably warranted. 
Instagram. I mean, you guys have been coming here to Barber County for so many years that, you know, there's been a big impact, really. There's the obvious impact um, of the improving the housing quality that we have here. Um, West Virginia has one of the highest home ownership rates, but we also have low family income, and that's a bad combination when it comes to families trying to keep their homes up. Um, so over the years, you know, the roofs that you guys have worked on, the bedroom additions, wheelchair ramps, um, that makes a huge impact in the community. Um, I don't think probably most of us really have a good handle on the stress that it is on a family to see um, water dripping in, you know, spreading your buckets around every time it rains and crowded houses and, um, you know, all these housing issues add a lot of stress to the families as well as safety issues and that sort of thing. Um, but another benefit to your program that's maybe a more subtle thing and not necessarily the direct intention, but it's a big economic benefit to our community. You guys spend a lot of money here and while you're here during your work week and building materials, gas, stops at sheets and those kind of places. And um, that's a big benefit that we don't take lightly here in the community as well. Um, and there's some other things. Um, that I think about, you know, for me, we come to these experiences um, planning to um, give and share God's love and to serve, and oftentimes I think this is kind of one of the mysteries of, of God's kingdom. Um, we leave realizing that we are the ones that are blessed in the experience, and it's one of those little secrets to the kingdom that I think we know we're on the right track, and when we learn that, life is good. So we never knew how many lives were going to be affected or changed by this work trip. But it does my heart so much good to hear that you guys are still doing this every year now. The legacy can continue because of the toolmen, because of the cooks, because of the volunteers, and because of all you who want to make a difference in the lives of those people down in Philippi, West Virginia. You know, there's some good people down in West Virginia, and they need our help. But you know, the funny thing about a work trip is that as much as we think we're helping them, somehow or another, they're helping us too. You know, we can't go on a work trip and come home the same. Things happen. Things change. We learn something. We experience something. We meet new people. We learn new languages, new, new words. And all that is part of being a Christian in the world today. I am so honored to know that what we started so many years ago is still going on even this year. Keep it up. Keep working. Keep learning how to use tools. Keep meeting new people and keep making a difference through the work trip to heart and hand in Philippi, West Virginia.